Hello there. Today's tutorial with Ian, and uh, with B present as well, is about can we set standards? As children are working and hopefully busily engaged, how do we as teachers consider uh, and examine standards? Now, I've got a thing about standards. You know, I think there's no point in mucking about. So, I discovered this chart when I was talking to a colleague. Now, I haven't written it up in full for you, but I have a smaller version which you can look at in detail later on. But I just want to indicate how I find this valuable when I'm working with children. You can make your own chart and modify it in any way you, uh, in any way you wish. First of all, it seems to me whenever we do work in any creative way, in a thorough way, because creative can mean thorough, we move from an area whereby we, we browse around, we play around, we gather our materials, we gather our ideas, and we slowly move from the gathering time to the beginning to use time. And it seems to me that we make a switch from this is a self-fulfilling activity. I'm just trying to get myself together. Uh, and gradually I get down to the work of it. I'm working it out now. I'm making use of those ideas I had over here that don't have a penalty with them yet. But now there'll come a penalty, not because I'll be put in prison or I'll be told I'm wrong, but because now I'm going to go through a process that produces a result. It may be only a neat shopping list that I'll be able to read when I'm busily going into the shop. Whereas over here it's a haphazard thing uh, where, you know, the cornflakes and the soap might be one after the other, but they're not like that in the shop. So to save me time, I'll produce one that as I go around, I can pick up and I know I haven't missed anything. There would be an example of what I mean by play and work. Now, as I move around this circle, I'm thinking only of the teacher watching the class and providing and nurturing the class, providing for it, offering help to it, uh, 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 watching it in terms of diagnosing what it knows. All these are going on because I'm a teacher. Now, over here then, the teacher in me is providing a lot. I don't mind offering a lot. But I'm providing it in either this quarter where I'm saying, yes, well, you could explore that a bit, wander about a bit more, or have you thought about this? Whereas over here, I'm saying, well, look, why don't you give that one a run and see, how, see what happens? So my prodigal provision is different if I'm functioning in my mind in this quarter to service the class than if I'm in this quarter. Because now I'm heading towards, in shopping list terms, getting it organised. It still doesn't have to pass a test in good writing. Mm -hmm. However, uh, when I come round to this quarter, you see, I've passed through this barrier of there has to be a product now. Uh, my shopping list would work enough for me to get the shopping. But if I were doing a medieval shopping list in calligraphic script, then I can't do it at that level. It has to come down to what sort of tools, what sort of parchment, who is my audience? It, I'm not my self-audience anymore. So as a teacher at this point, I'm putting in all kinds of disciplinarian stuff, but it's not bullying, it's to do with the pen, well, you'll need a better pen than that or try moving your paper this way, or try on this bit of paper first, and now take the best paper, because we can't afford a mistake now. And then we come around to this other quarter, which I think is very neglected. Time to mature your knowledge. Time to employ that thing you created here, or worked at, or that skill you began to acquire, so that you actually make it your own. Now, when you look at the average lesson, and I am not denigrating school, 
I'm just examining it in terms of my own practice and bearing in mind what I think matters in terms of standards and learning. This is the area we tend to start off with. This is the task, these are the tools, this is the time, do it. And I'll help you all I can. I'll help you all I can, because most teachers do that. But the time to browse around and pull yourself together is frequently denied children because we work on clocks, uh, not on learning times. And it's, it's terribly difficult to, you know, to give yourself the power to take three quarters of the time off this. Mm. But in fact, in my view, this works faster if these areas are considered first. Now, the time we come around to here then, we're working on uh, what my colleague, the, the name my colleague used was parsimony. You're getting a lot more achieved with less. You need fewer tools, you're prepared to work on limits, you're prepared to put your pagination, your margins and so on and so on if we're thinking of written work. I added a shopping list so I'm thinking of written work. Uh, and the parsimony is the craftsman level. I'll see how much I can make do with what I have and how much I can achieve. But this area is almost totally neglected because we expect children to pass from here to here without us doing a lot about it. The maturation time, the, um, the practice of the knowledge time is, is often not available because we don't do anything with what they create. If they've done some sums in a book, and they've done it really neatly and they've had a good pen and they've done all the right things with it, what happens to it? It's filed away. Marked it. It's marked away. Well, marking it isn't what I'm on about here. It's what do I next do that coherently employs that knowledge? Now, frequently, we think, well, we'll employ it if we give them another set more difficult. Because now they can do their seven times, we'll give them their eight times, which I'm not against tables by any means, because I think they're sensible. But uh, there often is no purpose beyond the teacher seeing it. And, of course, the child seeing I've filled a book, you know, the, uh, and now, you know, I've, I've done an awful lot of work in this book. Now, what we've been talking about is the provision of the circumstances in which everything that is browsed about, developed and orientated and focused, then achieved, will have to be used. In your case, because you've got to prove to that man mm. that there are all these plans for the wind and air pavilion which will be carried out and there will be audiences it won't be in Cardiff mm. because we, we work in schools and our culture doesn't let children be franchi franchised. So, you know, to get them to Cardiff, there probably aren't going to be the resources of time, money and so on mm. to actually work as our, with architects to, to complete it. Uh, one day, maybe, we can, we can get more of this as children are entered into the culture rather than carefully nurtured outside the culture. Uh, I put that rather badly. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about standards. Now the teacher in me then knows when I'm with a child which quarter I'm servicing and when I'm with the class. And I'm going around this constantly. In my real life, of course, I do it all the time. We allow ourselves to do it. Going to buy a new car? You start here. It's when you have to consider that you've browsed about, then things like, well, how much can I afford? What's reasonable to pay? I've checked on all the figures. Things begin to make limits. But I still have choices. But when I go down to the place where I'm going to buy the car, I'd better have, there'll be a penalty zone now if I get one that's no good. Uh, the money has to be right, it has to be available, the tech, the, uh, all the promises have to be there, and so on. And when I come back, 
I'll spend some time learning about it. As I drive it around, this is the time when I see whether that uh, was a, a sensible thing to have, uh, to have done. And if it wasn't, I've got to go here. Or if it was and I need one again, I've got to go back to here again. Now that seems to me ever so reasonable. This outer ring is the children. Time for them to explore. And that quality of exploration depends upon the kinds of stimuli and my enabling skills that I provide for them. So that they don't muck about, they explore. One doesn't abdicate from that. Over here is their time to orientate themselves to get moving on something. And again, what's the quality of my assistance? At what point do I begin pulling in the rain? What supplies do I provide that help them with their orientation? You'd be better if you were on your own at a table. Uh, we'll have to watch that paint doesn't wash over onto his work. Those are practical things, but others are. Well, I expect you've been to the seaside. Those are other orientations and enabling uh, skills, you see. And then over here, the quality of the limits I provide, the support system I give while I'm actually taking away and, mm. and making them do more with less. It's all to do with my quality here so they get quality experience there. And then over here, their time to elaborate. When I was thinking this through the very first time with students, I was thinking about when I used to go down to school, I had a two mile walk, and in this corner, in autumn, you were slushing through all the leaves and watching the oil stains from the old cars, because there used to be a lot of oil, didn't there, in the roads in my childhood. I thought it was petrol then, but I now realise it's oil. So this was, you know, slushing your way to school. But this began to be uh, realising that the leaves were different shapes. I can well remember the big uh, sycamore leaves were much more interesting to slush through um, than, the, than the little frizzly bits that had disappeared almost. And then you see, this, uh, this area, it was collecting the nice ones. Mm. And then this was coming home and my granny saying, well, I'll have to put them somewhere. Mm. get a jam jar and you can take it it doesn't matter what aspect of life you're thinking of now I'm just going to take you back through a thing we did with the children in the Tudors and Stuarts so you see if you remember I said and I'll get you to do it now can you put the houses of the royal families of Britain in the right order time wise now you see while they're doing that Come and on, I'll then. stop them in a minute so they better be fast <laughs> I'm in this quarter. I am avoiding saying, wait a minute, uh, have you got that right? What I'm doing is listening to the way they are either confident or unconfident. Uh, I'm enabling them to switch about and so on. And I've given them no tools other than that. They're exploring and so on. I've provided the stimulus. I'm making no judgments, but I am curious as to not only what they've done, but whether they're enjoying doing it. Uh, uh, has it given them enough of a game element to get on? Now I'm going to move them firmly into this quarter. By the way, you can use this to check if you're right. Just check if you're right and then see if, uh, if there's any alteration you need to make. Now, I, there's a no penalty in the way I'm talking to them. Norman, Not see if, you, uh, see if you're wrong and put it right. I'm saying see if you're right and if there's any alterations you want to make. So at this area, you see, I'm avoiding the penalty element. But actually, this is giving you a penalty element if you choose to take it if you choose to say oh, we're all wrong we've got these all wrong well you did it to yourselves if that's the case and i've learned something about the class 
and, and how it feels about being wrong. Now, you seem quite calm about being being okay. Did you have to change anything? Because I was busy talking to the people. No, I cheated. Well, I would have, yeah. I would have had I to change I saw you look at her. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but obviously this would be hidden mm. at that moment from you. So, you see, they moved to, to there. Now, then, the next stage on, you see, might be it's got to come into this area now. So, can we take two out? I'm going to ask you to take that one and that one. Can we take all the others away? And somewhere, which I probably lost again, I've got... Now, this is more complicated. Some of those are Tudor kings and, and queens, and some of those are Stuart kings and queens. Now, we won't look at this just for a minute. There's 14 of them. See whether you can work out who might follow who. Mm. Now, you see, the way I've dealt with that Jesus I've put a little bit seconds. of pressure on. I've limited <laughs> what they have to do, but I've expanded the difficulty of it. They have now 14 kings and queens, and it's a big, complicated job. Now, it doesn't matter, except they've all got to be used. Don't lose any. Check that you've got is it 14? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. How, how many have you got? Maybe I've counted wrong. 13, I think there is. 4, 6, 8, it's 12. Have you got 12? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You see, I'm in this quarter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've definitely got 12. Mm -hmm. Now, don't let any fall on the floor because we can't lose our kings and queens of Britain, right? Now then, see whether we can work out who came before who, you know, and who was the last. It's the Tudors and the Stuarts, and I promise you there's no more than what you've got there. Right. <laughs> now, you see, at this stage, I'm listening for the sort of logic um, well, they're bringing in. Um, now, they're going to well, arrange it as a, as a list. Those are all right. Well, hang on, are we going across or are we going down? Which no, there, going? they're doing it for themselves, you see. Which they're focusing. Um, are we going across or are we going down? Well, let's negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. <laughs> we can leave it there, but I'll be putting the pressure on. And though it looks like a joke, don't lose any from the table because we can't lose our kings and queens of Britain. <coughs> I don't expect any flapping about. And pieces of paper like this, with 28 children, if we think of your class, can very easily yeah. get flapped about. There isn't going to be any, if I can help it. Of course, I am not in charge of the children's behaviour till I see there's some problem about it. I'm assuming we'll manage if mm -hmm. we can. I'm foreshadowing, I'm warning, I'm kind of suggesting it's important. Mm -hmm. Even though at the moment it's a game, there's no context. I haven't suggested anything other than uh, royal families. Mm. But now, you see, when we're sure it's right, and we've added the dates, we've moved to the elaboration time, adding the dates extends the area of reference. But now, what can I do so that they will begin to consolidate this? I'm not doing a game to pass a happy hour. And I'm not saying, OK, well, we've done the Tudors and Stuarts now, put them away. What I'm saying to myself, and I haven't invented this, I'm doing it now in front of you. What might I do to allow them this elaboration time? Now, I'm just thinking on my feet, because I didn't have chance to go forward when I worked with your children. I'm saying, I wonder w whether you could make up a chant that put them in order. So we might, I wouldn't start with 12, I'd start with this. And we'd now have a purpose in trying to remember them. 
So making up a chant with all the class round might be one example yeah. of this elaboration time. Another one might be, and not better or worse, but alongside it, uh, I'll, can you now all make a copy, because I may not have enough money to have photocopied them all, can you make a copy and can you put them in order and when you've got them in order we'll put a note beside anything we think the Normans did. When you read Plantagenet, what do you think they must have done when they were Plantagenet kings and queens? Now, you're going up to the browsing a bit as well. I'm not saying you have to put down the truth of history. I'm saying if Norman rings a bell, what do you think of when you think of Norman? And some, you'll have more ideas related with Normans, perhaps, than with Plantagenet. Because mm. as, as children, we probably learn more about the Normans and so on and so on. Am I making a little bit of uh, sense to you? But processing this forward into the no penalty zone again, I mean, could you invent a card game with them? Mm. Yeah. Many children could think of other things to do because gradually as time goes on, one hopes the children will assist me in how could we make sure we really get this clear. Now, it's not so much this clear that I want in a Tudors and Stuarts study, it's mm. this clear. But if I want them to learn to organise and think for themselves, I might get them to do this first. Because that'll teach them how to lay things out, handle the glue, sort the page out, not mess it up, not lose anything, and then we come on to the one yeah. that, that really matters. Um, if, if I decide on a chant, what sort of instrument or instruments might I bring around Oh, you know, what have we got with pencils and, and, and uh, desks that we can tap out, feet, clapping, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Now, I've used that to give a very, very brief example. But, of course, it's always a serious example. Because it's always serious in the matter of binding knowledge mm -hmm. and also the exploration of the affective zone helping us bind the knowledge. It's the affective zone that gives you interesting things to sort out. Uh, even if you find it difficult to read, I can support you here, because I'm not condemning you if you can't read yet. But I know it's part of the exercise that it'll take me to, to reading. Okay? Mm. Right, I just wanted to give you uh, that mm. illustration.